In a perfect world, we could all just drop footage into our editing software and start working. And in many cases, we can do just that. But as higher resolutions and bit rates push the limits and new formats pop up to challenge our systems and software, you may need to go a different route. Transcoding is the process of converting footage from one encoding to another. This could be converting the actual format of a file, adjusting specific parameters while keeping the format the same, or changing both the format and parameters. This may be a feature built right into your primary editor or a standalone program. So, how do you decide what to do with your footage? There are basically three possible workflow options. Using your native footage, transcoding to an intermediate codec, or transcoding into proxy files. Let's start with native footage. Native is the term used to describe the original footage that records to your memory card or drive. The advantage of using native footage is that you don't have to spend any time transcoding, you're not creating additional files that take up room on your hard drive, the workflow is simpler, and there's no potential for quality degradation. So why would you ever want to transcode? There are two primary reasons. The first is if your software doesn't support the native format of your footage. The second is if the native footage is too demanding on your system resources to edit efficiently. Let's tackle the first reason. If your primary editing software doesn't support the native file format of your footage, you'll have to transcode it to an intermediate codec. Intermediate codecs are especially designed to preserve the quality of the native footage while simultaneously being easier to work with in an editing program. Two of the most common are Apple ProRes, which is most often used in Final Cut Pro, and DNX HD, which is most often used with Avid Media Composer. In many cases, simply importing the footage into these programs will offer the option to transcode. Let's take a look at an example. Okay, so I'm in Avid Media Composer, and I'm going to bring a piece of footage in by selecting AMA Link, and we'll just grab this guy right here. Okay, so this little link guy tells me that this is an AMA linked file. And if I double click it here and I click play. Mechanism. So seeking out peers. It's trying to play the native kind of file, the but it's not doing very well. The audio is out of sync. It's just sort of struggling to play it. So while I could try to edit this way, probably going to be a little bit tough. So what we can do is go ahead and right click this say consolidate transcode, select transcode, and then I've got some options here. Now in this case, I just want to do a pretty high quality um, intermediate codec. So I'm going to choose this DNX HD 175, tell it to go there. That looks good. Click transcode. Okay, so a minute and 30 seconds later for a 51 second uh, clip, and now I've got my transcoded version here. So now let me double click this version and let's try to play that one. So, you know, not giving up. Uh, much, much, much better. So that's gonna make it really easy for me to just um, edit in Avid and Avid's gonna play this file beautifully and I'm gonna be far less frustrated. So even though I could potentially use that native file, in this case, the transcoded version is just gonna make my life easier. And because the intermediate codec is designed to not degrade the footage, we're really not losing any quality. Now for the second reason to transcode. Even if your editing software can work with the native footage, it may be taxing your system to the point where the editing process is being hindered. In these cases, you can transcode the native footage into proxy files. A proxy file is basically a converted version of the native footage that uses lower quality video to reduce the demand on your system and software. Working with this low quality footage is known as offline editing, while working with the highest quality version of the footage is known as online editing. The basic workflow here is to transcode the native footage into proxy files, edit with the proxy files, and then relink to the high quality originals before you export your deliverables. This obviously adds steps to your workflow, but may save you time in the end. Let's take a look at a simple example of this process. Okay, so I'm in Adobe Media Encoder, and I'm gonna go ahead and double click here and add some files to this render queue. So this is my 4K um, GH4 footage. I'm gonna highlight it, and you'll notice that it is in the post workflow project folder in footage, B-roll, GH4. Click open, 
And now by default, it's the last one preset I used was 720p proxy, so that works out well. And then the main thing I definitely need to be careful of is I don't wanna render over my originals here, so I have the, um, there's a setting in encoder that will automatically add like an underscore one, and I have that turned off while I'm creating proxies. So you just have to be careful. Click on where the output file is going, and you can see the last place I put things was actually in the renders proxy. So I'm gonna select that folder, it changes them all, and then I'm gonna go ahead and render those out. Okay, so it took a little less than two minutes to render those proxies out, and now what I'm gonna do is go ahead and go into Premiere Pro. Okay, so we're in Premiere Pro here, and I've done a couple things. One, I created the 4K footage sequence that matches the GH4 original footage, and then I created a 720p sequence that matches the proxies. So, you know, Premiere Pro is not really designed at, by default to work with proxies, but there's some pretty easy ways to work around it if your system just can't handle, you know, um, the native footage as you're editing. So I'm gonna go ahead and double click this footage folder and then I'm gonna double click again to import. And now make sure that you're in your post-production workflow renders proxies here. Click open. So this is bringing in those 720p proxies. Okay, I can close that down. So I'm gonna pull this in. And also I can verify here by selecting this and looking up here, it's definitely 1280 by 720. And so let's just sort of do like random quick edits here. Let's just say this is what I wanted to do with the footage. Okay, that's fine. Nothing too fancy here. Get rid of all the um, uh, empty space. Okay, let's just say, for instance, that was my final edit. Obviously it's not, but let's just pretend that it was. So from here, if I want to relink to the original footage and get a 4K export, I could simply just highlight these and you could highlight your entire sequence here. Control C to copy. I'm gonna double click my 4K composition, paste it in there and notice, okay, well we've got 720p footage in a 4K comp. So really that's exactly what it looks like at 100%. The trick here now is to highlight these proxies, right click, make offline, media files remain on disk, Okay, so now it's coming up media offline, which is really what we want. Right click again, link media. Okay, now it's gonna ask me to find these. Now it's used to looking for these in the proxy area, but really what I wanna do is tell it to look in the original folder. So that's gonna be in post workflow, under footage, B-roll, GH4. So it's looking for the first one in my list. And if I click and highlight that one and click okay, it's gonna go ahead and find the other ones and it's basically gonna look at the same file path. So now if I highlight each one of these and we look right up here, that's the 4K one, that's the 4K and that's the 4K. And in our 4K timeline, it now fills up the entire screen. So it's basically that 720 edit we created now replaced in a 4K sequence with 4K footage and you could export or do your final work from there. So you're not trying to create your edit and struggling to play these things back. And that's a simplified way to use proxies in Premiere Pro. Um, other programs like After Effects have even more dialed in ways to do it where you can sort of check to use the proxy, uncheck to use the original. Um, but this just gives you an idea on how that kind of a workflow would work. If you've got the right computer setup and the most current software, transcoding may not be necessary. But if you find yourself frustrated by drop frames or sluggish performance, transcoding may be the solution you're looking for.